Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Van Johnson, Elizabeth Scott, and Don DeFore in You Came Along. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. During my many years at Warner Brothers, I was associated with a producer whose talent I admired then and have admired ever since. He is Hal Wallace. Just a year ago, Hal formed his own producing company and in that short time has delivered three of Hollywood's leading screen successes, among which is our play tonight, You Came Along, with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's meteoric star, Van Johnson, co-starred with Elizabeth Scott and Don DeFore. You Came Along is a poignant story of romance that starts 3,000 feet above the clouds and never quite descends from that celestial and ecstatic plane. On this, our first performance of 1946, we are celebrating many firsts. Tonight's play was the first screen story ever written by the author, a Portland advertising man. And our cast is headed by a star who's certainly one of the first and foremost in his field, Van Johnson. Also, her role tonight not only introduced Miss Scott to motion pictures, it presents her for the first time to our audience. And finally, we have another first in the product that sponsors these productions, Lux Toilet Soap. Not only is Lux Toilet Soap first choice among our leading screen stars here in Hollywood, but your own preference for Lux Soap, expressed in your many letters of of appreciation, makes you first among discriminating audiences, and also makes it possible to bring these plays to you each Monday night. And speaking of firsts, our curtain rises on the first act of You Came Along. Starring Van Johnson as Bob, Elizabeth Scott as Ivy, and Don DeFore as Ander. A year ago, while war was still raging, three army flyers, heroes of many combat missions over Europe, were suddenly returned to Washington, D.C. Two of the pilots were assigned to tour the country in behalf of the Sixth War Loan. The third pilot, a Major Collins, had orders to report to Walter Reed Hospital. Under the circumstances, Major, it will be impossible for you to go along with him. But it's a bond drive, sir. The Treasury Department's requested me. I'm sure they want you. You see, sir, Captain Anders and Lieutenant Janoshek, well, we've been through a lot together. We'd like to stay together a little longer, at least as long as we can. (laughs) I've been very frank with you, Major, about your condition. Sir, I have just received the Distinguished Service Cross. It doesn't matter whether I deserved it or not. I've got it. And I'm reminding you that I've got it. It ought to mean more than just a pretty medal. Yes, Major. A lot more. You place me in a most difficult position. I've forgotten, sir, who first said, eat, drink, and be merry. But he certainly spoke my language. That wasn't all he said, Major. Yes, I know. There's some more about what happens tomorrow. And... uh... Uh, does it matter, sir? Give me that application. I'll sign it before I change my mind. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Tell me, where's this tour taking you? Straight across the country and back. There's a Mr. Hotchkiss from the Treasury Department who's in charge. Have a good time, Major. Sell those bonds. And uh, better look me up when you come back. Thank you, sir. I will. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. One at a time, huh? Sorry, Major, but there's a lot we'd like to know, and your plane's due to leave soon. Yeah, we're just waiting for Mr. Hotchkiss to show up. Say, Major, how many Nazi planes have you shot down? Uh, let's see now. Uh, 644. Oh. Too many? Well, we'll split the difference. 322. Yeah, the rest got away. What do you think about when you fly into battle? Oh, personally, I think about my girl. Yeah, but which one? That's what I think about. I try to decide which one. (laughs) How many bonds do you propose to sell on this tour? Ask Hotchkiss. What do you think of the home front? Ask Hotchkiss. Hey, I wonder where this Hotchkiss is. I'd better check up on him in the administration building. But handsome and Shakespeare here will be happy to answer all your questions. Oh, no, no, no.
terribly sorry, Major Collins, but Mr. Hotchkiss hasn't reported yet. Well, thanks, just the same. If you'd like, we can page him. Oh, would you? Mr. I.V. Hotchkiss. That won't be necessary, thank you. What? Major Collins? Yes. I'm terribly sorry. I'm from the Treasury Department. Oh, you are? Would you mind telling your Mr. I.V. Hotchkiss that... But I'm I.V. Hotchkiss. Well, that fellow... You're who? I.V. Hotchkiss. I.V. Why? I.V. You mean that... Uh, that you're taking us on this bond tour? My boss is supposed to, but he's sick. Well, that's fine. That's fine. So, uh, you're going to take charge, huh? That's what I'm here for? Uh-huh. Well, suppose you start by finding me a briefing room. Briefing room? You know, it's where we go just before we take off on a mission. I need a place like that to say goodbye to my, uh, my sister. Yes, Major. Are the other gentlemen here? Oh, yes, they're here. And if you don't mind, they'll be needing a briefing room, too. I'll take care of it right away. Is it time to say goodbye? Are you going to miss me? Oh, you bet I am. But you've only known me a couple of days. Oh, but that's a lifetime, Gertrude. Wilma. A lifetime Wilma. <laughs> Kiss me, Bob. Mind if I walk? Or is that a secret weapon you're trying out? Oh, no, no secret. Everybody knows about this. The plane's ready, Major. Oh, is it now? Well, I'm not. Wilma, baby, I've got something for you. The little ribbon. It's called Polymerit. That means for valor. Oh, you darling, I didn't know you cared so much. Keep it, Wilma, for always. And how about another little kiss? Oh, Bob, I... Say, does she have to stand there and watch us? Oh, excuse me. I see how your friends are doing, Major. They're in the brief. Something I want you to have, Helen, this uh, little ribbon. It's called uh, Polymerit. Oh, Shakespeare, I don't deserve this. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, but you want it in Normandy. And you want it in Washington. Now, I just got to say thank you. Handsome. Kiss me, baby. Oh, monotonous, isn't it? Oh, well, oh. oh. hello, Miss Hodgkiss. Oh. oh, we didn't see you come in. No, no. <laughs> Sorry, gentlemen, but the plane's ready. That's right, fellas. You heard what the lady said. Break it up. Say goodbye to handsome girls. Goodbye. Oh. Goodbye. 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 Take care of yourself. Well, this honey. way, Major. Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, are we going to have this kissing scene everywhere we go? Well, we certainly hope so, don't we, boys? <laughs> we certainly <laughs> hope so. <laughs> we'll get a load of this. Our own private plane. Yeah, and we don't even have to fly it. Hey, uh, Bob, give me another one of them poor de Marites. I planted mine. Yes, sir. Here you are. Two cents apiece, and it does the work of dinner, theater, and champagne. Have one, Miss Hotchkiss. Just what are those things? It's a ribbon, a decoration. See? What did you do to get them? Give them. But what are they for? Uh, well, you might say they're for valor in the face of the opposite sex. We give them to all the pretty girls we meet. Have one? I don't think I'd like any, thank you. No, of course she wouldn't. No, of course she wouldn't. Oh, now, look, Miss Hotchkiss, don't take us too seriously. We'll improve. Honest, we will. Now, how about it? Are we friends? Well, sure. Sure, we're friends. Jake? Me, too. I, I know you didn't expect to have a woman along. Suppose you just forget I'm here and be yourself. That's fair enough. Thanks, Hotshaw. That's a deal. Say, you don't look very comfortable there. Come on, let me help you. Here, yeah, let me get those bags out Now, wait bag. a minute. Not too much. Good manners. Oh. Just, uh, relax. Yeah. Oh, uh, Hotcha, that beret you've got on, do you suppose you could take it off? Mm, I suppose so. Yeah. Well, hubba, hubba, hubba. <laughs> well, hubba, hubba, hubba. Say, that's not bad, you know. Not bad at all. Porter, gentlemen, chairman of the Bond Rally here in Boston. How do you do? How do you do? Well, I can't tell you what an honor it is. Thank you. Hold it, please. Hold it. Just one more picture. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, if you'll all just come along with me. Oh, but we have hotel residents. Our heroes are coming to my home for dinner. Just a small gathering. Oh, that's Just nice. 30 or 40 people. Oh. Then after dinner, we'll go to the Bond Rally. Oh, will you take care of the luggage, uh, Miss... Uh... I'm here to help in any way I can. Anything I can do for you, Major Collins? As a matter of fact, there is. Step over here, Hotcha. Oh, excuse us for a second. Not too long now. Well? I've got to consult my little black book here. Let's see now. Akron, Baltimore, Birmingham, Boston. Ah, here we are, Boston. Now, see these telephone numbers? Give them a ring, Hotcha, and tell them I'll be over later on. Let me see that. Peggy Laverne, Club 400. Alice Joyce, Congress 4471. Maisie. And why the question mark by Maisie? 
A question mark? Oh, I just didn't know her last name. Just call Peggy Laverne at the Club 400. Understand? I understand perfectly. Good. Well, all ready, Mr. Porter. Now, you're sure you understand, gentlemen. The three of you wait in this room. I'll go into the dining room, make a few appropriate remarks by way of an introduction, and then I'll say, here come the three musketeers of the skies. Musketeers of the skies. Sure. That will be your cue, you see. The orchestra will play, and in you come the three of you. Oh, fine, fine. Oh, come in, Miss Hotchkiss. Come in, come in. Hiya, Hotcha. Drink, Hotcha. No, thank you. You, uh, you didn't lose it, did you? Lose what? You know, the valuable book. No, Major. Here it is. Thanks. The lady is expecting you. Wonderful. After the bond draft. Oh, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> if I may interrupt, I think I'd better join my guests. Now, don't forget. Oh, we won't, Mr. Porter. Oh, oh, when the orchestra starts, try to enter on the downbeat lead. Oh, yes, yes. Bye. Now, come with me, Miss Hotchkiss. Is it really necessary to leave them here alone? Come along, Miss Hotchkiss. I give you my heart. Take it, Miss Hotchkiss. Now then, in we go. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just sit right there, my dear. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, speech-making is the curse of our country. Too many people speak too much and say too little. <laughs> Therefore, I shall not weary you with a long speech. I am certainly better orators. I... Well, dear me, bless me, I, I've spoken for almost an hour. <laughs> Why didn't somebody say something? I refuse to talk a second more. And now, here come the three musketeers of the sky. Just a moment, please. Stop the music. Stop the music. Uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, the three musketeers of the skies. The three musketeers of the skies. Miss Hotchkiss, where are the fires? No, I don't understand this at all, Miss Hotchkiss. First they disappear, and now you drag me off to, to the... To the Club dead. 400? It's right down the block. Uh, not a word of explanation, nothing. I'm warning you, Miss Hotchkiss, You I... want those words for your bond rally, don't you? Well, of course I do. I've got... Hmm? Oh, oh, thank you. Wait a minute. Yes? That ribbon you're wearing, where did you get that? Oh, this is called Pour le Marie. It's given for valor. This is the place, all right, Mr. Porter. Wait for me. But where are you going? To the girl, course girl's dressing room. Of course, where else? Oh, hello, hello, hello. You see? That's why we call him Shakespeare. Well, don't stop, Shakespeare. Fat out some more sugar. It's good. Okay. Come sit thee down upon this flowery bed. While I, thy amiable cheeks, do coy, and stick musk roses in thy sleek, smooth head, and kiss thy large, fair ears, my gentle joy. Oh. Now I'll show you just what the poet meant. Come here, honey. I trust I'm not rude. Hot shot! What do you mean by walking out on me? Oh, gee, Mrs. Collins, I didn't know he was married. Oh, please, Mrs. Collins, really, it's all my fault. Yeah, we only asked him to have a drink on account of he was lonesome, and all of a sudden we run into these dolls. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Mother. Really, I am. Are the children waiting up for me? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Major. Now say goodnight to your little girl. Come on, darling. We've got work to do. Yes, Mother, I'm coming. Good night, little girlfriend. Good night, Good night honey. honey. Good night. Well, I'm it, gentlemen, in spite of all the headaches you caused me earlier this evening. That was a wonderful night's work you just put in at the Bond Rally. Oh, fine, but what are we doing parked in a hotel lobby? It's only 10 o'clock. I brought you to the hotel because I thought you might be interested in getting some sleep. Where's my little black book? Let's see. Peggy, Alice, Maisie. Maisie. I just can't remember. What about you two? Well, I, I'd kind of like to take a look around the city, aren't you? Great city, Boston. Full of historical landmarks. Uh, yeah. Then I guess I won't see you till morning. I'm going to bed. <laughs> hey, here's one, Shakespeare. Look. Corrine Kranz. Yeah. With a star, too. Hey, let me study that book a minute. Yeah. Well, have a good time. Oh, we will. Just remember our plane leaves for Chicago at 7 o'clock. Hey, wait a minute, Hotcha. I've got an idea. 
Well? Look, why don't I just turn over my volume of vital statistics to Handsome and Shakespeare? And? Well, well, I was thinking, uh, maybe the two of us, you know. Look, Lothario, I know you're a great man with a P-38. I also know you're a hero. I know, too, that you're heaven's gift to the women of America. But it just so happens that I'm not having any. Good night. Hotcha! Look at her go. She must be mad at something. Hey, you know, Hotcha's not a bad-looking kid, is she? Got a neat pair of gams, too. Oh, boy. Look, as far as you're concer- is concerned, she's still Mr. Hotchkiss. Mr. Hotchkiss. Mr. Hotchkiss, old boy. Now then, any ideas for the balance of the evening? Yeah, and no blind flying, either. Give me my little black book and gather round. Okay, where's the telephone and who's got all the nickels? <laughs> In just a moment, we'll bring you the second act of You Came Along, starring Van Johnson, Elizabeth Scott, and Don DeFore. Meanwhile, here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. Your servant, sir. I mean, good evening, Mr. Keeley. You see, I've been living in the 18th century this afternoon. A very neat trick, Libby. How did you do it? Well, I've just seen a preview of Paramount's costume play, Kitty, starring Paulette Goddard and Ray Milland. And it made a hit with you, I see. Oh, my. Lush, lavish, lovely. What a picture. In Kitty, Paulette Goddard plays an 18th century English beauty who is a model for the painter Thomas Gainsborough. Well, Libby, I'm sure Mr. Gainsborough wouldn't have asked for a lovelier subject of paint than Paulette. Oh, just wait till the audience is here in the dazzling costumes and the striking coiffures of the 18th century. Goodness, what elaborate clothes they wore in those days. Paulette Goddard would do full justice to those period costumes. Matter of fact, Libby, she's plenty gorgeous in plain, everyday 20th century dress. Oh, yes, indeed, Mr. Kennedy. Paulette is one of the most glamorous of the Hollywood stars. With her lovely coloring and those big blue eyes. And Libby, Libby that glamorous luxe complexion of hers. <laughs> what a single-minded man you are, Mr. Kennedy. I was just getting to that. Because Paulette is a regular user of Lux toilet soap. She says she finds active lather facials just the right care for her delicate skin. Lots of lovely stars do, Libby. Nine out of ten of them, in fact. You know, Mr. Kennedy, I wish every woman who thinks her complexion could be softer and smoother would try Hollywood's beauty care. That creamy Lux soap lather really does things for the skin. Recent tests by skin specialists showed that. Actually, three out of four complexions improved in a short time with daily Lux soap care. Here's Paulette Goddard's Active Lather Facial. I cover my face generously with the creamy Active Lather and work it well in. I rinse with warm water, splash on cold, and pat with a soft towel to dry. Leaves skin softer, smoother, gives it fresh new beauty. Screen stars can't take chances with complexion care. That's why every woman who hasn't tried it owes it to herself to see what this real beauty soap can do for her skin. To make it softer, smoother, lovelier. Why not get some gentle white Lux toilet soap tomorrow? Mr. William Keeley returns to the microphone. Act two of You Came Along, starring Van Johnson as Bob, Elizabeth Scott as Ivy, and Don DeFore as Shakespeare. It's early the following morning, and aboard their transport plane, the three war heroes and Miss Ivy Hotchkiss are approaching Chicago. After their night out, Shakespeare and Handsome are more than a trifle wan. The business like Miss Hotchkiss has just administered bicarbonate of soda. Oh, gee. Thanks, Hotcha. How'd you know we needed this? That's what comes of studying historical landmarks until 3 a.m. Hey, uh, where's Bob? Up front talking to the pilots. Uh, oh. Now what? Oh, it's just my shoulder. Shoulder's a little sore. You got a shot up last year, Hotcha. It all looks so sad. I'm a very lucky guy. Hey, give me your leg, Handsome. I want to knock on wood. Here. Handsome? Oh, it works fine, see? Yes, sir, Hotshot. If you want to talk about war wounds, just talk to me. I'm full of them. And Bob did. Did anything happen to Bob over there? Who? Who, Bob? Yes. Uh, well, uh, come to think of it, I, I never asked him. Oh, here he comes. Well, look, don't you ask him either. What? Uh, well, some of the guys just don't like to talk about it. Oh, of course. Buckle up, children. Chicago's coming in. Already? Hey, when's a man going to relax? After the bond rally. We'll do it at the Victory Center at noon. Will you let us go after that? Certainly. I hope you have plenty of numbers in Chicago. Oh, Hotcha, don't be mad at me. I'm not. 
After all, you're supposed to look after us. Just what do you expect me to do? Uh, you wouldn't know of a blonde, say, about five feet four, disposition rotten, who'd be free tonight, would you? <laughs> well, that's the rudest way anyone's ever asked me for a date. <laughs> what do you say? I don't have a rotten disposition. All right, then. How about dinner and a good dance band afterwards? Oh, well. Hey, get Hey, here. what about us? Who's the little major around here? Sorry, fellas, you're outranked. Just concentrate on something nice to say at the Bond rally. Now, listen carefully, please. All right. All right. I'm leaving you here at the rally. You go on in a couple of minutes. Now, wait here in the wings. Okay, but where are you going? Sorry, but I have a heavy day. Yeah, well, who with? The hairdresser. Oh. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, at the hotel. I'll always wait for your attention. Hey, isn't that Joyce Heath singing out there? Yeah. Well, what do you know? Well, hubba, hubba, hubba. Hey, she's coming off the stage. Get a load of little Joycey. One side, handsome. Oh, I beg your pardon, Miss Heath. May I have your autograph? Why, Major Collins. Well, hello. Oh, I hoped I'd have a chance to meet you. I saw your pictures in the newspaper. Oh, yes. Oh, excuse me. This is Captain... Oh, don't tell me. Captain Anders and Lieutenant Janoschek. Hey, she knows our names. Well, I'm your pin-up girl, aren't I? Oh, you bet. It's but her picture I have yet beheld, and that hath dazzled my reason's light. But when I look on her perfections, there is no reason but I will be blind. <laughs> That's Shakespeare. You can spot like that all day. How nice. Are you staying in Chicago for long? Oh, no. We're flying to Des Moines in the morning. Oh, well, then you must spend the evening with me. You, what? Would you say that again, please? You must spend the evening with me. I can't let you be lonely, can I? I'll have a couple of very special friends in to meet you. How do you do? How do you do? Very glad to know you. Mutual, I'm sure. I'm staying at the Maywood. The Maywood. We'll be there. Please, gentlemen, the audience is waiting for you. Oh, yes. Well, goodbye. 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 Hubba, hubba, hubba. Hello. Hello, is this Desperate? Yes. This is Miss Hotchkiss. If Major Collins... Oh, would... Miss Hotchkiss, we just received a message for you. Yeah? It's from Major Collins. He's sorry to have to break his engagement with you, but he's been called to spend the evening with some old squadron friends on a military matter. I see. Would you like the note sent up? Oh, no. No, thank you very much. Well, good evening. Hello, Miss Heath. I'm so glad you could come. Come in, gentlemen. Hi, Miss Heath. Hello there. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> this is Major Collins, Captain Anders, and Lieutenant Janice Miss Gloria Carter, Miss Carol Dick. Hi, Hi Gloria. Gloria. Yeah, and in here, gentlemen, Commander McCurran and Lieutenant Commander Nelson. Uh, Commander, uh, Lieutenant. <laughs> uh, we didn't realize this was going to be an amphibious operation. You, you're sure we're not intruding? Uh, maybe you boys would like a drink. Uh, yeah, we certainly would. It's in the kitchen. Oh, can I help? Thanks, I wish you would. Oh, excuse me a moment. Well, what would you like, Major? Uh, say, I just had an idea. You see, we didn't exactly count on the Navy being here. Oh, well, I thought... That oh, I... that's all right. I'm just thinking of Shakespeare and Handsome. How about throwing up a little flack and driving them off? That would leave us with three girls and three men. Less crowded. Well, I... Oh, come in, darling. Major, this is my husband, Rear Admiral Taylor. What? Well, how do you do, Major? Taylor is my real name, you know. Oh, well, uh, that's interesting. Darling, come right in and meet the others. Oh, Tom, I'm so glad uh, you were able to get away. Do, as you were, as you were, gentlemen, as you were. Oh, now, here's something that should interest you, Army men. My uh, souvenir photograph album. <laughs> I dare say you gentlemen would enjoy some pictures of our naval activities. Now, uh, this one. <laughs> this one was at Annapolis way back in 1919. Uh, this rather humorous story connected with it. Three beautiful dreams like that in the Navy moved in first. How do you like that? Now, look, we got you out of there. Didn't we relax? You're in a nightclub. Photograph albums I got to look at. Hey, pipe down. I've got the hotel. Greystone Hotel, desperate. 
Oh, this is Major Collins. Did you re- deliver my note to Miss Hotchkiss? Oh, yes, sir, an hour ago, sir. Oh, she she got it, huh? Oh, yes, Major. Just before she went out. Went out? Well, who with? I mean... Uh... Just between us, sir. With the Navy lieutenant. Oh, she seemed very glad to see him. She did, huh? Well, that's great. The Navy again. The what, sir? Uh, never mind. Thank you. Well, she's gone out with a sea scout. I thought we just left the Navy in little Joyce's apartment. Yeah, the whole fleet must be anchored in Lake Michigan. Hey, you guys, guess who I just seen? Admiral Halsey. No. She just came in. Hotcha. Hotcha, here? Yeah, and with a two-striper. Well, and we're not going to just stand here and talk about it, are we? Come on, we got to break this up. Well, well, so this is what you're up to. You come home with me. And aren't you ashamed running out on your husband like this? Yeah, with a sink full of dirty dishes and all them kids crying. You, sir. You. Yes? Did you happen to know that she's a married woman? Well, no. Did you? It won't work, Bob. It it won't? It won't work, fellas. Bill here knows better. Lieutenant Allen, Major Collins, Captain Anders, Lieutenant Jennifer. Hi, Lieutenant. Just, uh, just what is this, Lieutenant Allen? Convoy duty? Yeah, making for port or just a flat top? Oh, we've made it already. Oh, yes, it's all settled. What? Our future plans about getting married. Getting married? A little sudden, isn't it? Oh, no. Bill and Frances have been engaged for months. Bill and who? Frances, my sister Frances. I don't get it. No. Well, Bill and Frances will be married in San Bernardino. And since we're going to California, I'll be able to attend the wedding. You're all invited, too. Oh... Oh, well, congratulations, old man. That's that's wonderful. Drag up that table, Hansel. Well, congratulations, <laughs> congratulations. Old boy. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Oh, women. What a blessing. Do you really think so, Major? You're darn right. Archer, you look wonderful. Oh, thank you. That's certainly a beautiful dress you've got on. Oh, Shakespeare, you're just full of compliments. Now, why can't I think of those things to say? Well, that's the trouble with you. No imagination. No foresight. Yeah. Never a thought for the future. Sorry, Bob. Forget it. Hacha, my favorite tune. How about a dance? Thank you. Excuse us, gentlemen. Bob? Yeah? What did you mean before about the future? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. But Shakespeare's face, it, it, it just froze like... It, it did? Look... Hacha, I'm I'm sorry about standing you up tonight. Oh, that. I didn't think that was a date. We were just talking, weren't we? Well, yeah, but I'm certainly glad we ran into you. You know, Hacha, I might need that parachute after all. What parachute? Any parachute. You've got me up in the air. I might need something to break my fall. Mm-mm, you won't. I intend to keep you up in the air. You know, uh, that's my language you're speaking. Is it? Is it a deal, then? Just fun up in the air? Just that. You don't take anything seriously, do you? Mm-mm. Why? Oh, too many things to take seriously. Oh, Major, Major, old boy. What do you want? May I cut in? If you don't mind, Captain Old Thing, we'll be in Des Moines tomorrow. You may take your turn then. As you wish, sir. Carry on, old bean. Cheerio. Look at him. I am. I don't mind admitting I'm a little worried. Huh? Why? Never mind. Oh. Oh, yeah. Skip it. Well, well, alone at last, aren't you? In Chicago, Bob says, now wait till Des Moines. In Des Moines, he says, wait till Seattle. In Seattle, he says, wait till... Oh, here's a table. We've got to grab it. I've never traveled so far and so fast in my life. This is San Francisco, isn't it? How could you forget? It's taken me till Frisco to cut in. What'd you say happened to Bob and Hanson? Oh, they'll be along. Will they know where to find us? Well, it's a cinch. The nearest bar. You uh, wish to order, sir? Uh, yeah, uh, what will you have? Uh, a little sherry, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind at all, as long as I don't have to drink it. Sherry and a bourbon and soda. Well, 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 Captain Anders. Well, good afternoon, sir. Oh, Ivy, this is Colonel Hunt, Miss Hotchkiss. How do you do? Pleasure. Well, that shoulder of yours give me any more trouble? No, it's healed fine. Just fine. Good. 
Colonel's about the best doctor in the Air Force, Ivy. Just been on a very interesting case, Anders, a general. He had a great big spleen and anemic as an oyster. Had malaria, no fever, though. Very peculiar case. Uh, soda and sherry. Oh, thanks. Uh, drink, Colonel? No, thanks. Just leaving. Got to get back to the general. Those tough cases, they always send for me. <laughs> Funny thing, Ivy, but the man's right. Just take the case of that friend of yours. I spotted it like that. Very unusual. Tricky to diagnose. A friend of Shakespeare's? Yes, well, let's see. It must have been... Uh... <laughs> Oh, now look what I've done. Gee, I'm terribly sorry, Colonel. Don't oh, forget it. Yeah, but the drink, I've spilled it all over you. Nothing at all. About that fly, Miss Hodgkiss. His white corpuscles multiply too fast. Nothing anybody can do about it. Tried everything. Pity. Fine, strapping fellow. A major. Oh, <laughs> Colonel, you'll never guess what I've been doing. Looks as healthy as you and I, but he can go any minute. A month or two, maybe a year. Have you seen him lately, Anders? Uh, well, well, no, you see, he he died. He died a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that's all. Funny nobody told me. Very unusual case. Well, nice to have seen you, Anders. Bye, Miss Hotchkiss. Goodbye. Watch that shoulder now. Yeah. <laughs> A great guy, the doctor. He died two weeks ago. Huh? I'll say. Uh, how about taking a ride in the cable cars, Hotcha? No. No, he didn't. It's Bob. He was talking about Bob. Oh, now, look. Don't be silly. Why, Bobby, he just got a little leg wound. I'm beginning to understand you and Hanson, you're standing by, aren't you? That's why you never leave him alone. That's why you're always so gay. So he won't have time to think about it. You better snap out of it, Hachi. He's coming. Come on, now. Turn on a smile. Hurry up. Well, here you are. Hi. Hello, Hachi. Drink? No, we, we just ordered them. How do you like this guy, Hanson, trying to move in on my girl? Well, I'll fix that. Acha, tonight you and I are going dancing. Without. Without what? Without these two primary cadets. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, I think I'm still the ranking officer around here. And, of course, the most fascinating fellow. Well, let's leave that up to the young lady. Well? Well, well, I... Uh, you see, it's all settled. All right, you guys, find yourselves a couple of blondes. Bob, doesn't it bother your leg to dance? Oh, you've got me mixed up, Hotshot. Handsome's the one with the peg leg. <laughs> Nothing wrong with mine. Uh, pot, sherry, bourbon, bourbon, and beer. Pay the man, Handsome. Huh? Oh, how come I always Pay gotta... the man. Okay, okay. It's a date, then? Let's drink to it, huh? To you and me and the first one. Thank you for a lovely evening, Bob. Fun? Oh, yes. Could I, uh, could I come in for a minute? For a minute? Ah, John. Yes? I was sure proud of you tonight. You looked wonderful tonight, just the way you looked that night in Chicago. When I stood you up? <laughs> Aren't you ashamed, though? That was a long time ago. Only three days. A week ago? I never knew you even existed. You can live a long time in a week. Sometimes when you're in a tight spot, you can live a year and ten seconds. You've done that, haven't you? I guess it's not a bad way either to crowd everything there is to live for in a day, a week, or a month. What are you talking about? You. I didn't hear a word you said. Well, I'll amble along. Yes, it's, it's late. Uh, would would you be sore if I kissed you goodnight? You see, I, I just feel so good, Hacha. I wouldn't be sore. Good night, Hacha. Good night. Pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In just a moment, we'll bring you the third act of You Came Along. Starring Van Johnson, Elizabeth Scott, and Don DeFore. And now for another chat with Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. Mr. Keeley, I had such a thrilling experience the other day. 
I went to see a screening of Metro Goldwyn Mayer's picture. They were expendable. Oh, yes, Libby. The picture about Batan and Corregidor. Yes, and here's what made it especially interesting to me. I went with a friend of mine who, until recently, was an army nurse. She wears the Presidential Unit Citation and the Bronze Star Medal for the services she performed during those awful days of Bataan and Corregidor. And what did she think of they were expendable? She was deeply impressed. And she got a big kick out of the romance between the army nurse and the Navy lieutenant. And then she told me something of her experience out there. Something I thought would interest our Lux radio audience. Go on, Libby. Well, she said that long before she enlisted, she was what we call a Lux girl. And when she left for active service, the two things she took with her as reminders of life back home were a pair of red shoes and a box of Lux toilet soap. I can understand the Lux toilet soap, Libby, but the red shoes. She certainly couldn't wear them, could she? <laughs> of course not, Mr. Kennedy. They were for purposes of morale only. She told me she used to take them out and look at them just to forget reality for a moment. Aren't women funny creatures? And then here's something else she said. There was my precious supply of Lux toilet soap. I used it whenever I could, and oh, what a lift it would give my spirit. I think the women and even the men in our audience will understand just what that army nurse meant. She must be happy to be safely back home again. Oh, yes. But she's going away again, and guess where? Back to the Philippines. Well, that seems a bit hard to understand. <laughs> Not when I tell you she has a brand new husband stationed out there with the army. Ah, so romance was a sequel to our Lux girl's bitter experiences. It was. And you'll be glad to know she's still a Lux soap enthusiast. She told me she's taking a big supply of Lux toilet soap back with her. That makes us feel very proud, Libby. Thanks for telling us about your friend's experiences. Women everywhere agree with nine out of ten screen stars when they say daily Lux soap care leaves skin softer, smoother radiantly fresh. Why not get some fine white Lux toilet soap tomorrow? See how Hollywood's own complexion care can work for you. Here's your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act three of You Came Along, starring Van Johnson as Bob, Elizabeth Scott as Ivy, and Don DeFore as Shakespeare. <laughs> As Ivy's guests at the wedding of her sister, Bob, Shakespeare, and Hanson have accompanied Ivy to her uncle's home in San Bernardino. It's a couple of hours before the ceremony, and in an upstairs room... Oh, darling, it's so wonderful to think you were able to get here. My one and only sister's getting married, remember? Oh, by the way, you don't happen to know where the groom is. Well, he was showing Bob where Uncle Jack keeps his Scott. Oh, you know, I, I like your flyers, Ivy. They're so gay and cheerful. Yes. Ivy, is anything wrong? You... Well, you seem so serious. Oh, I'm sorry. I've just been thinking. What about? Oh, nothing important, darling. Now, come on, you've got to get dressed. Ivy, I've been thinking, too. Do you think it's right, Bill and I getting married? Why? Well, you think when Bill sent away, having a wife, will that make it better for him or worse? I don't know. Francis, if you knew Bill was going to die... Oh, don't say that. If you knew for sure, would you still marry him? Oh, of course I would. Yes. Yes, it doesn't really matter, does it? One year or 20 years. Or just a few weeks. When you love each other very much. Why, then? No. It doesn't matter at all. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I just want to make sure of something. Well, here, here's to you, Lieutenant. A little repetitious by now, but here's to you, Lieutenant. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, say, Major. Yeah? Uh, do you mind if I ask you a sort of uh, personal question? Shoot. I haven't told Francis yet, but I've received my orders. I'm shoving off any day now. Oh, that's tough. It's just that I want to be sure I'm doing the right thing. Getting married. Anything's liable to happen to me. Oh, it's not that I'm afraid... It's just that I can't think of... Well, it's... It's leaving somebody at home who'll get hurt and stay hurt and never stop. Yeah. Yes, that's it exactly. For you, for you, it'll be quick, like a like a debt paid and done with. But somebody will go on paying and paying and never quite reach the paid in full. Yeah. You've been overseas and you've come out safely. I guess that's why I thought you could tell me. Oh, I can't decide that for you, Bill. It's whatever each man decides for himself. And I guess whatever he decides is... Is the right answer? Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Hello, honey.
much, huh? Hello, Bob. It was a beautiful wedding. Oh, yes. It's a wonderful party. Then why aren't you inside with the rest? Oh, uh, competition's too tough. You're, you're just too popular. All those guys in there. You don't really mind. No, I guess not. A girl like you. Well, I suppose you must have a man somewhere in the service or back east, maybe. Oh, a lot of them. But, but not one? That is not an important one? No. Oh, that's too bad. Why? I guess it would be better if you had. Well, there, there's one man I like. Oh, oh, there is? Who is he? Shakespeare. I like him very much, don't you? <laughs> oh, Shakespeare. Oh, say, that reminds me. Yesterday in Frisco, you were looking very serious at Shakespeare when I came in. What were you talking about? I don't remember. Did he, uh, did he tell you anything about me? No. Why? Well, he should have warned you. What kind of a guy I am. What kind? The wrong kind. A nice girl should never give me a second thought. There's no future in it. Suppose she doesn't care. Well, she should know it anyway. And if you cared for her? That's when I'd want her to know what I was like. Would you tell her that? I am telling her, Hotjar. Oh, look. Look up there. Did you ever see the stars so bright? Oh, there's my best friend over there. Polaris. Polaris? Yeah, the, the North Star. See? No, 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 where I'm pointing. About a year ago, I, I had my instrument shot away, and old Polaris, he brought me back to England. I had to go due west, and Polaris is straight north. So I put him on my right shoulder, and he brought me safely home. You want to come home, Hacha? Then look. Look over your right shoulder to Polaris. Bob. Oh, darling. Fine thing. I make a big play for a kiss and you're crying. I'm sorry. Hotcha. Here, this is something I want you to have. What is it? Oh. A poor Marie. Take it. You've got it coming to you. No, I don't want it. Take it. I guess I've been kidding myself. But I, I want you to have it. There. Now, turn it over. Bob. Oh. Yeah, the wedding ring. That is, if you want it. If I want it, do you want it that way? I don't know. I I don't know. It has to be the way you want it. Oh, yes. Yes. Can you promise me something, Hot Char? And you've got to keep the promise, understand? You, you've got to keep it. I can try. Look at me. Yes. No matter what happens... No matter when, don't ever grieve me, baby. Don't ever grieve me. Well, the happy trip will soon be over. Yeah, what a honeymoon this has been. Well, next time, try the train. At least there'd be more privacy. Well, no one can say we didn't accomplish anything on this trip. So millions and millions of dollars of Bob. And got Bob off our hands. And now what? I'll tell you now what. There was a telegram for us in Cleveland. We're going into Mitchell Field. We're to be stationed there. Well, flying desks, huh? I guess, maybe. For a while. Oh, there was another wire, Hotchar. The colonel got us a house. He's being transferred. It's ours as long as we want it. Oh, I hope it's a little house. A little house with a lawn and a garden. And a fireplace in the living room. And a back porch with a vine all over it. <laughs> and a white kitchen. A kitchen with a four-burner range and an electric icebox. Well, there's your lease, and uh, here are the keys. You know, Mrs. Collins, you're very lucky Colonel Bonds was transferred. I hope you'll both be very, very happy here. Oh, we will be. Well, the best of luck. Good night. Good night, and thanks a lot. Oh, Bob. Bob, it's wonderful. There's no other house like it in the whole world. This one is ours. Here, here we're alone. We can come in here and everything will be shut out. The city and the streets and the sky. Space and time. We'll never know in here whether it was an hour or a week or, or ten years. And it won't matter. It won't matter. You know, I, I feel like I want to get down on my knees and say thank you. Bob, it's 8 o'clock. You're going to be late. 
Oh, well, don't stand there, woman. Where's my coat? I've got it. Here. Don't you know if I'm late, Mitchell Field will fold up. I'm, I'm indispensable. Well, you are. Incidentally, I've some very important business to transact today. What's that? I'm going to buy a hat. <laughs> well, I am. Then maybe you'll want to take me out someplace. Well, where do you want to go? Nowhere. <laughs> That's funny. I don't either. Well, we, we haven't been anyway, any place for weeks, so I, well, I thought I'd make the effort in case you wanted to have a good time. Hey, wait, wait a minute. I am having a good time. I want you to know that. Why, this is exactly what every man overseas dreams about. Some of them make it, and, well, some of them don't. I'm a lucky guy, Hotjar. I want you to remember that. You will, won't you? Yes, darling. I'll remember. Yeah, that's better. Oh, I may be a little late getting home. I have to fly down to Washington. Washington? Just some more of that red tape I'm tangled up in. <laughs> be back in time for dinner. Be careful, my darling. Oh, don't worry about me. Don't you ever worry. Hey, can we come in? Come on in. Well, look at him, handsome. Parked behind a desk just like an executive. Hey, where you been all day? Washington. Huh? huh? Well, what a sweet disposition they pinned on you. I got my orders. Orders? Where are you going? Back overseas. You're kidding. I'm leaving tomorrow. Let me see. See what? The orders, old boy, the orders. Don't you believe me? I'm going back overseas. Sure. Sure, sure, I believe you. Uh... We're going to miss him, aren't we, Hanson? Such a pleasant character. So, in case I don't see you fellas in the morning. Goodbye, old boy. Hey, hey, remember us. No goodbyes. Always the best, Bob. You know that. Does, uh, how'd you know you? No, not yet. Say, uh, look in on her now and then while I'm gone, huh? Sure we will. Sure. So long, you mugs. Be seeing you around. Good so luck. So long, Bob. Hello? Uh, this is Major Collins. Yeah. Will you send a wire to the Walter Reed Hospital, Washington? Tell them I'll arrive tomorrow, uh, before noon. Yeah. Thanks. Plane's ready, Major Collins. I'll be out in a minute. Yes, sir. Well, honey? I... I guess you don't know just where you'll be. Someplace in England. I'm going to miss you, Bob. I'm going to miss you. I'm... I'm going to miss you, too. I... I expect you to go out sometimes. I... I don't want you to be a hermit. That, that goes for me, too. I told Shakespeare and Hanson to look in on you now and then. Did you? So you won't get lonesome. Will you write me often? Oh, sure. Gift already, Colin. Yes, sir, I'll be right there. Oh, Colonel Hunt, I'd like you to meet... No, Bob, no. Uh, Say something? No, it's nothing, Colonel. I'll talk to you on the plane. Right. Better hurry. Right. Didn't you want to meet the Colonel, honey? Not now, darling. He... He's going with you? Uh, yes. Yeah. Liar, too? No, he's, uh... He's in ordinance. Ordinance. Well, you... You heard what the guy said... Kiss me, Bob. It's been swell, hasn't it? It's been wonderful. Well. Well. No goodbyes. No goodbyes. Happy landings, darling. Happy landings. Well, well, make with the letter, Hotcha. What's he got to say? Yeah, where is he? Oh, I I'll read it to you. Dearest, landed safely after a pleasant trip. I have a leave here in London before I report for duty. I'm staying at the Hastings Hotel with the manager's an old friend of mine. Well? The rest is private. <laughs> Look, you go into the living room and answer it. We'll mail it when we leave. Oh, thanks. Oh, oh, by the way, Shakespeare, remember that Colonel Hunt we met in San Francisco? Huh? Colonel Hunt, the, the doctor. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. He isn't in England now, is he? 
Oh, no, no, no. He's in Walter Reed. Why? Nothing. Just funny. What's she talking about? I don't know. Eastings Hotel, London. Suppose that's where Bob really is. Well, that's where the letter came from, didn't it? Yeah. It must be there. It must be. Mr. Halliday, sir. Yes, yes. What is it? Look, here's a letter from Major Collins and a letter from Mrs. Collins. Both from the United States and both addressed to each other at this hotel. That is correct. I still don't quite understand it, sir. I explained it to you once. Major Collins is in a hospital in the United States. He doesn't want his wife to know about it. Oh. Then shall I readdress the letters as I did before? Yes, and, and no mistakes, mind you. No mistakes. Is that you? It's us, all right. Well, come on in. Are you beautiful? Hey, you ready for the game? We got tickets on the 40-yard line. Just where till I get my coat? Uh, any word from Bob lately? A, a letter this morning. Nothing new. He, he's still in London. Oh, that's swell. Swell. Oh, now, don't tell me you have other admirers calling. I'll let you know in a minute. Uh, yes? This is Robert Collins? Yes. Sign here, please. Telegram. Oh, thank you. Shakespeare, I bet Bob is having himself a time in London. Yeah. I just talked to a fellow who flew in yesterday. He said, saw Bob Saturday with a blonde in one arm and a brunette on the other. <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. <laughs> Handsome. Shakespeare. Oh, well, yeah, Hacha. Yeah? I, I don't think I'll be going to that game. The, the telegram? We, we regret to inform you that your husband, Major Robert Collins, died. Died at the Walter Reed General Hospital this morning. Oh, no. No. I, I just don't know what to say. I... Just don't know what to say. Well, dinner's ready, gentlemen. Come and get it. Hutcher, we were just talking. How, how a girl could keep up the way you've kept up these last couple of weeks. Uh, 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 that's enough, Hanson. Oh, yeah. Sorry. He said to me once, don't ever grieve me. Don't ever grieve me, baby. Now I know what he meant. You knew then, too. Yes. Yes, I knew. Oh, uh, say, we got news for you. Oh? Yeah. Uh, we got kicked out of our place last night. We were making too much racket. Uh, we thought we might stay here from the spare room just for a few days. It's only till we can get another place, Hacha. Is it all right? Of course it's all right. Say, uh, Hacha, do you suppose we could have a little drink before dinner? Help yourself. I'll uh, pour one for you, too, Hacha. It'll do you good. Yeah, it'll do you good. There it is. Go on. Take it. I am having a good time. I want you to know that. that this is exactly what every guy overseas dreams about. Some of them make it. Well, some of them don't. I'm a lucky guy. Luckier than most. I want you to remember that. You will, won't you? Well, Hutcher? Well... Here, here's to us, Bob. The four of us. In just a moment, our stars will return for their curtain calls with a very important announcement for next week. If you're a housewife with a daily marketing to do, you've discovered it isn't always easy to buy your favorite Lux toilet soap. All soaps are hard to get right now, a direct result of the acute shortage of industrial fats. This shortage is the reason the government asks you to keep right on saving your used kitchen fats. They're used to help manufacture most of the peacetime goods we all want. Nylon stockings, tires, refrigerators, soaps, and hundreds of other articles. Pour every drop of used kitchen fats into your salvage tin and take it to your butcher. He'll give you four cents for every pound you turn in. American women did a magnificent job of fat salvage during the war. Now your government asks you to continue it. Here's what our Secretary of Agriculture says. 
It may be many months before we can obtain adequate supplies of imported fats and oils for these uses. In the meantime, every housewife can help to prevent soap shortages by turning in her used kitchen fats. So keep on saving. Here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. For a most enjoyable evening, our sincere thanks go to Van Johnson, Elizabeth Scott, and Don DeFore. Van, I've watched you climb to the top in pictures, and it's been very refreshing to see you taking it all in your stride. Well, thank you, Mr. Keeley. I, I just hope my luck holds out. <laughs> mm, it's been more than luck. It's been a lot of hard work. And, Elizabeth, we're happy to welcome you to this theater. Well, Mr. Keeley, you can imagine what a thrill it was for me to work opposite Van Johnson. I guess that's every girl's dream. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. Uh, speaking of dreams, Elizabeth, I trust that dream of a complexion comes from Lux Toilet Soap. Indeed it does. I was using Lux when I was posing for magazine covers back in New York City. Well, that's probably why Hal Wallace signed you up, Elizabeth. Tell me, Van, I've seen Don before in the Paramount Picture Store Club, and they can be proud of him. But when are you giving us another picture? Well, two of my pictures are about to be released. I'm working right now on the life of Jerome Kern. And in my spare time, I do a little radio work. Radio? What shows besides Lux, Van? Uh, on command performance this week, Bob Hope, Frank Sinatra, and myself present a very tense and moving drama called The Rover Boys Down East. <laughs> <laughs> well, that drama sounds like a thrilling possibility for Lux sometime, Van. Well, we'll be glad to do it for you next week, if you say the word. <laughs> oh, no. Next week's reserve for a very special and momentous event on Lux. Yet for the first time in many years, I can't tell you a word about it. Well, that's something new under the sun. You mean to tell me you can't tell the name of the play you're putting on next Monday night? No, only that it's been voted the most popular picture of 1945 by the American public. You mean to tell me that you won't even whisper the name of the stars? Not even half a whisper. Well, I suppose we can always guess. Yes, but you can't guess out loud, at least not here over the microphone. Mr. Keeley, you've got me all excited. I'm trying to think of all the pictures I liked last year and wondering which one I liked best. And now you're wondering if the American public agree agreed with your choice, eh, Elizabeth? That's right, Van. Well, you tune in next Monday night and you'll hear the name of the picture <clears throat> and the stars that the people of the country voted most popular of 1945. And better still, we'll enact the play with the original stars, including the actress who has been voted America's most popular feminine star. Uh, how did they pick the favorite picture and stars, Mr. Keeley? Photo make, uh, Photoplay magazine selected George Gallup's Audience Research Incorporated to make a nationwide poll of moviegoers. The winning picture to receive Photoplay's gold medal award. <clears throat> the results are in, and the winner will be announced when Photoplay's February issue is released on Friday, January 11th. Till then, our lips are sealed. But I can promise you it's one play above all others most of you will want to hear, with two of your very favorite stars. Sounds like a very exciting surprise, <laughs> Mr. Keeley. I'll be listening. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good night, and many, many thanks. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents... With its original stars, the screenplay America has voted as its favorite during 1945. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Van Johnson appeared through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer, Elizabeth Scott and Don DeFore through the courtesy of Hal Wallace Productions. Miss Scott will soon be seen in the Hal Wallace picture, The Strange Love of Martha Ivers. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear America's favorite screenplay of 1945 with its original stars. The Spry Treat of the Week. Spry muffins, light, tender muffins with centers of crimson jelly. Serve them piping hot for breakfast, win oodles of praise. For delicate golden hot breads, insist on pure, bland, all-vegetable spry shortening. Rely on spry. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of America's favorite screenplay of 1945. And why not tune in a half hour early to hear Joan Davis over most of these stations? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.